Good morning. We sincerely welcome you to the Salvation Army Raleigh International Corp online worship service. I want to share some announcements. The first, this is the good news. Finally, next week, uh, we will worship in the call. Major K has already sent information to you. For worship, for our health, we would be grateful if you could check carefully and follow our instruction. I thank you for your understanding and the, your cooperation. And for those people who are not able to attend in-person worship, we will provide the worship service with live streaming at the same time. You can join our live streaming worship service. We will provide more information to you later. The second, next week also we will worship as a candidate Sunday with Major Gary Sturdivant. He is coming as a special speaker. Please pray for this service. The finally, we will have Diversity Sunday worship on the 27th of September. Please wear your culturally relevant clothing, and if you would like to participate in a special way on the program that day, please let Major K or I know right away. Today, call to worship from Psalm chapter 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Thank you. 
Good morning, family. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, you are worthy of all our praise. This time we put all our fear and worries down and focus entirely on you. Receive our worship and praise to you. Holy Lord, we believe that everything we need is found in you. We ask you to fill us with all this. For those for us, of us who come here feeling broken, give to recovery. For those of us who come here feeling weak, give to strength. For those who come here weeping, give to joy. For those of us who come here with doves, give to faith. For those who come here feeling shame, give to freedom. For those of us who come here feeling burdened, give to rest. For those of us who come here feeling anxious, give to peace. Father God, thank you for using Lieutenant J for us today. You speak through him. Now our hearts to receive your word. May it change us. Make us less and you more for that would be best of all. And do all this for Jesus' will, we ask. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello, family. If you'll join with me on our next song, it's going to be Sweet Hour of Prayer, song 787 in our Salvation Army tune book. We'll be singing on verses 1 and 2. Good morning, church. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. 
Our scripture this morning from Psalm 119, verse 33 to verse 38. The second one, Revelation 3, verse 7 to 8. The first one, Psalm 119, from 33 to 38. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Then I will keep them to the hand. Give me understanding and will keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your studies and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from all flesh things. Preserve my love according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant to that you may be feared. Revelation 3, verse 7 to 8. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, white, they heard the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. When he shuts, no, no one can open. I know your deeds, see. I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strong, yet you have keep my word and have no denied my name. Amen. Let the Lord bless his word. Amen. Hello, church. The next song we will be singing is song number 795 in the Salvation Army songbook. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I'd invite you to sing with me on all three verses. To sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often. Good morning, family. Uh, this is very honored to, to share the God's word. Indian educator 
Uh, Dr. Kelly Lee assessed there are three mental sins in modern men. The first is that people don't want to learn even if they don't know. This means you act as if you know a lot, but what you have to learn is that you don't try to learn. The second is that you know, but don't teach. We need to teach others our knowledge and experiences we know, but we do not teach. A third, they can do it, but don't act. They have knowledge and experience, but they don't act. She said, these are the three mental sins of a modern man. A wise believer must learn and know the word of truth immediately before every opportunity pass. We stand firm on the word of truth and live by obeying the word of truth. And we live as a victor of faith. Maybe you may have been struggled with disease like this too. Many peoples are not interested in the knowledge of knowing God. They don't even try to learn about the word of God. What can we do to them like this? What we can do for them and for me is the prayer. Today, I wish to have time to pray to God with you through these three prayer topics. The first, our first prayer is teach me the word of truth to help me understand you. Teach me and understand you. In, in Old Testament, Psalm chapter 119, verse 33, Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees, then I will keep, I will keep them to the end. Here, decrees refers to God's commands in God's word. This is also asking God to teach you yourself. This means acknowledging, acknowledging that one's sins, one's failures are the result of not knowing God. In our lives, we gave all our hurt and the suffering to my family and neighbors and friends as my word, as my act, as my bad something event. Even we do not uh, realize what I did. And as a result, our family and the neighbors are living with the hurt. When a counselor consults a couple or family, most couples give the same answer. The answer is, I did not know how simple it was then. Consider for a moment what Jesus said while being crucified. Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, he said. Because they did not know they could uh, cry out the crucified Jesus. Because they did not know they loved and mooked. Because they did not know they condemned Jesus as a blasphemer. Because they did, did not know they have scolded the Lord. Jesus said, Enter our life is to know God and to know the Lord. The priests and the parishes, they said, We believe in God and the new God. But they did not realize, recognize Jesus as their Messiah sent by God. Rather, they crucified Jesus on the cross. The apostle, the poor, did not believe in Jesus as the Son of God and persecuted those who believed in Jesus. And while working against the Lord, he met the Lord dramatically in Damascus. Then, he recognized and accounted for the Lord. When Paul, Paul 
uh, recognized and realized Jesus, he proclaimed of the cross of the Jesus, invite and invite Jesus, and lived faithfully as a witness of the gospel, and became a mother. A person of the faith is a person who understands and knows the word of the truth. Only then can they please God. Only then can they be loved by God. If we are to become people who know the word of truth a lot away, we must receive the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who guides us into the truth and the making us aware and knowing the truth. Today, verse 25, I am laid lower in the dust, preach of my life according to your word. Here, the uh, here word life is coming up from the Latin word hyene, which means uh, to give life to live and to restore. Uh, we believers Believers must be touched by the word and then live again in the word. The word arrive our souls, refreshes, reverence the Lord, comforts, give wisdoms, overcomes the temptation to the away from the evil, overcomes suffering, and makes us strong and courageous. The second. Our second prayer is, make us stand firm in the word of truth. Make us stand firm in the word of truth. Verse 38. Fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be bared. 28 also said, my soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. This verse compasses his weakness and asks that, please set up your servant according to your word. The, word. the word of the Lord's truth has the power to strengthen us. If you build us on that word, in other words, if you become a person who believes in the word, as they live while relying on it, like Joseph, if you are betrayed by your brothers, you will not be shaken like Job. Even when suffering comes, you endure temptation with faith and you become overcomers. Like Paul, you will compass in the typical situation like this. What them shall we say in response to this? And God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his one son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was a right to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Whom shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or uh, persecutions or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God's truth word has the power to make my life right. It has the power to turn away from the sin, injustice, and the evil always. We become a person who lives by keeping the word of truth, even when we have difficulties. Two days, 
in the New Testament, so we can see uh, one of the seven churches uh, in the Asian meter, uh, now called the Turkey. It is located, located on the high plateau. This is the where, uh, this is where a lot of grapes are produced. It was the economically prosperous area due to the development of agriculture and the commerce. The Philadelphia church was not long established. The Christian were new believers and there were not many members. The members' social status, position, and external conditions were not very good. They were poor and had a little ability, but they lived a life of hard faith. They had a Satan's temptation, but they did their best to keep the word of God. They overcome, overcame Satan's attacks and then defended the church and received the compliment from the Lord. If we build our house according to the word of truth, we are like those who build a house on a rock. And we become a house that never falls, even when rain and the wind blows and the waters overflows. Living according to the word can be a great challenge for us. However, because God's strong word and the word of power surround us and protects us safely, we are safe in the Lord. I pray honestly that you set you up in this word of the truth. Last, third one. Third, our prayer is help me to act and to keep the word of truth. Help me to act and keep the word of truth. Old, Old Testament, Psalm, chapter 119, verse 33 and 34. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees, then I will keep them to the end. In verse 34, I said, give me your understanding, and I will keep your law and obey it with all my heart. This prayer is important because, because truth without action is meaningless. No matter how deeply we realize the truth, Unless we live it, we are nothing. In James, just as the body without the soul is dead. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. If you don't change your life according to the word of God, that faith is just dead. Even if we worship, study Bible, and understand the word of truth, there is no benefit to us if we do not act and change our lives. The Philadelphia church in the New Testament sees that the Lord's compliments that comes to follow them living the word of truth. God compliments them, say that, you kept my word and you did not betray my name. Despite all kinds of trials, temptations, persecutions, and the convictions, they kept their faith and did not betray the Lord. At the time, many Jews lived in the Philadelphia area. They denied the being the Messiah of Jesus and even persecuted the believers in order not to believe in Jesus. The Philadelphia members did not betray the Lord despite the persecution. So they were complimented by the Lord. Our Lord doesn't compliment, compliment us when we do uh, something great with great power. These Philadelphia members, they had a short little of faith, had a little of knowledge of the Bible, one not strong and had nothing to boast about, but God loved them. 
the Lord wants us to use us as we are. Although we are weak, God is pleased to see us moving forward with the word and the face of God. Think about it, Moses. Moses' stuff, stuff was insignificant, but God's power was with him. And then when he reached out his hand with his staff, the Red Sea split. And then when he stuck the rock with the stuff, water sprang from the rock. When he raised the hand with the stuff and prayed, he was able to defeat Amalek's army. Think about it, David. David only had a stick and the five stones in his hand. But God was with him. He was able to defeat Goliath, even though he was a giant, had a shield and a sword. Think about it, boys. When uh, tens of thousands of people were hungry, when a boy brought out five loaves and two fish, God's miracle happened. Our little compassion and the faith make miracles. Please remember, our little compassion and faith make miracles. I want to sum up my sermon with the introduction of the Lord gave some uh, promise to the Philadelphia believers who kept the word of the Lord. First, he promised the blessing of the open door. Verse, Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know you are this. See, I have pleased before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have a little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Second one, he promised to show God's love before his enemy. Verse 9. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, although they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Third one is promised to protect your times of disaster and trial. Verse 10 said, since you have kept my commands to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test to those who live on the earth. Another one, he promised to make him pillar in the temple of the God to those who overcome through faith until the end. Chapter 12. No, verse 12 says, Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of God. Never again will he leave it. Final. He gave me promise for a new name. He gave me a promise for a new name. Verse 12. I will write on him the name of God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. Today, I invite you to your place of prayer. When the video starts, I hope that I pray to understand God's word, to stand firmly on God's word, and to live according to the word, God will answer your prayer. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, oh, who dwell dark and sin my hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I say
God is focused on your voice. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3 says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. God's channel is always open. Please fix your eyes to God now, and God will respond to you, your voice and then calls. Today, Closing song is song number 201, Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Burning all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Let's sing together.
Let's pray. Thank God for always and any time staying with us. Now, please open our eyes so that we can discover and associate with you all the times. God, I pray for your infinite blessings and then grace come to our beloved Salvation Army family. God, provide our needs and always deliver us from our sins. I pray for us to live with God's new strength, hope, and vision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.